tried to uh, keep him from shouting angrily, tried to keep from shouting angrily and said, What do you mean you don't know? If you will be able to dis to dismantle a thousand ICBMs by next month. Mr. President, Mr. President, if you don't have the job done by then, then we will have your press leak out a rumor that you slept with one of your pa male pages and are now literally dying of AIDS, haha, -ha, and will be dead by next year or sooner. Do you hear me, Mr. U.S. President Wilson? The humming sound in the Oval Office increased again. Wilson got a sm dull look on his face again, then smiled and stickered, saying, is that so? After that, Wilson regained his senses back. Borsky shouted, mimicking him with fury. Is that so? Yes, that is so. What has gotten into you? How come you are showing backbone to me? Do you want me to die? Do you want to die of AIDS here and now? I can eject you with some contaminated blood. President Wilson just sat in his chair, sniveling and crying with fear. Please. Please, 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 Boris, don't hurt me. Don't hurt one me. Don't let me, don't let it out that I fooled around with a page. That'll, that'll be embarrassing, and I don't want AIDS. Very good, Bobby. I think you will serve us well after all. Goodbye. As Borsky began to leave the room, as he was leaving, he quickly raised his hand, making President Wilson cower and whimper. Borsky then laughed. Borsky laughed and uh, combed his hair. He went, and then in Black Tinia, the Black Mutants laughed. This next story I'm about to read to you is called the Pyramid on the Pyramid on Mars. On Black Tinia, the Black Mutant got tired of watching the news. It wasn't long until he realized that it wasn't that it was nothing but bad news. The Black Mutant then began watching sports shows. Every once in a while, the, Black, the Mutant would laugh to realize that he was able to control a world leader and not change time. Out in space, near Jupiter, Newton's ship was almost fully repaired and his crew was almost totally restored to normal. Callisto was the only crew member that seemed to be having difficulties. A couple of days later, and Mutania began to travel toward Earth. Do you think the Black Mutant has attacked Earth yet? asked Sheena to Newton. If it had, it would have changed time, changed history. It's probably or orbiting Earth, getting very frustrated, realizing that it doesn't want to change time. He's probably aware that if he kills somebody, it might be one of his ancestors. One thing is for sure. That mutant gets bored quickly. We have got to feed him and destroy him before he does get bored and decides to change time, said a concerned Newton. Jeff Long looked confused and asked, Newton, have, have you ever wondered why we should bother going after the mutant? What do you mean, Jeff? asked Newton. Well, well, what's puzzling me is, why bother stopping the Black Mutant? We are still here, aren't we? Yes. Well, then the new, that that means we should we we shouldn't even bother stopping whatever he does, or we'll just in, interfere with time. I know. I know. I know," said Jeff. "All I know is." If someone went back in time and shot me, I would be here now. I know that, Newton. Oh, yeah. I know, said Newton. All I know is that if, I, if someone went back in time and shot me, I would be here now. I know that, Newton, but, but here. But we're here now. This shows me that we have nothing to fear because, uh, so somehow the Black Mutant failed in killing all our, our ancestors. You are right about that, Jeff. Even so, I feel safer if we remove the mutant out of this time. Out of, out of his time. 
the Black Mutant could kill a lot of people on Earth with that powerful ship of his. So either way, we have got to stop him, said Newton, thinking about what the Black Mutant did to his ship and crew a few days ago. A few minutes later, as Mutania was passing by the red planet Mars, Newton said, I've been on Mars only twice in my life. It's a very dull, cold planet. I went through hell on it nearly 30 years ago. The meeting place set up a structure on the planet that nearly burned me to cinders. It was a very close call for me. Wasn't it... Wasn't they, wasn't there anything down on it that was pleasant? asked Ovacoba. No, I did find the Viking probe interesting. I don't remember if it was the Viking or not, but it actually had something growing in it. It was a green transparent blob resembling a slug. I, I doubt it. I doubt it's been uh, found yet. The blob probably... Uh, Oh, I doubt that it's been formed yet. The blob probably formed when the first astronauts on Mars breathed on it. Newton suddenly started thinking of something. What was the Viking for, Ashina? It was to see if there was any life on Mars in the um, hopes in the hope that to make evolutionists happy. What did make people excited? was the pyramid on Mars and the giant uh, uh, statue of an Egyptian face. Of course, when they got there, they discovered that the pyramids were not pyramids and the face was just a deformed volcano. We really weren't descendants from Martians after all. Newton started smiling. What are you smiling about, Newton? asked his crew. Uh, nothing. Newton started laughing. It's no, I, I, I couldn't. That wouldn't be. That that'd be cruel. What tell? Begged his crew. Well, I was, I was listening to the radio. Signals of the the radio signals of Earth today. I, I heard a Soviet atheist yelling about how the universe, uh, universe is eternal, is the universe is eternal, enormous. How the universe. Is, uh, is his eternal enormous nor enormousness proves that God doesn't exist. Uh, the way he carried on made me angry. Because he was right? asked Callisto. No, because he uh, sounded so proud. You know you, you know what I feel like doing? What? asked the crew, his puzzled crew. I feel like putting a real pyramid on Mars, then using our ship change ray to increase its size, say a few thousand times. But that will change time, shouted Callisto. No, it won't. It will just give people something to wonder about. And what will really be funny, and will make future atheists wonder whether or not there is a god or not, is that I'll design this pyramid like the pyramids of, like the pyramid of Egypt, only put more Christian symbolism in it. Of course, uh, put more Christian symbolism into it. Of course, I'll make it so our ancestors will be able to find out who really created the pyramid. But it will take a lot of computer analysis to come to the to that discovery, said Newton with excitement. Gosh, Newton, said Mason, I don't know about this. It could cause a lot of problems and change time. That's right, Newton. What if some of our ancestors are religious? Who... What if some of our ancestors are religious? Who only think Earthlings uh, exist and no one else? This could make them hedonistic atheists who might kill them, kill someone. An ancestor of ours, said Doug Davis. <sighs> I'll see. Once I plant my pyramid on Mars, I'll see, once I plant my pyramid on Mars, and Newton went to design his pyramid. Three hours later, Newton brought the pyramid he created onto the bridge. The crew laughed to see a foot-high clay pyramid that was already 
fired from Newton's phaser beam. Newton told his crew that the pyramid was computer created and was filled with secret passages designed into it that were filled with old Babylonian words depicting a future return of Christ. In the top of the pyramid was a little cavern with a statue face of Christ. This should frost the whiskers of the future atheists, laughed Newton. His crew didn't know what to think. They just held their fingers crossed, hoping nothing horrible would result from it. After Newton used Mutania's tractor beam to dig a square hole on the surface of Mars, a hole a mile in diameter and 500 feet deep, Newton then beamed the little pyramid he made right into the middle of the square hole. What next? asked Sheena. Direct the size change rate at it. Turn it on to maxima, maximum, smiled Newton. Mason hooked up a size change machine into Mutania's phaser system, then turned it on. A silver glowing beam of light shot out of Mutania and landed on the, on the little pyramid. Right when the beam hit the pyramid, the so hit, right when the beam hit the pyramid, the pyramid began to grow large. It wasn't long until it looked like a gigantic Egyptian pyramid. What next? asked Mason. Uh, fire a row of phasers around the pyramid. Doug, that will kick up a lot of, uh, yeah. Fire a lot of, fire a row of phasers around the pyramid. Doing that will kick up a lot of dust, burying the pyramid to make it look ancient. Mutiny fired the beams and the pyramid was buried. Mutiny was going to go to... Mutania was going to continue on its way toward Earth, but Newton had a strong desire to beam down and see what his pyramid looked like on Mars. When Newton beamed down onto it, he did a lot of smiling to see his pyramid looking very ancient and mysterious. The perfect thing to make his ancestors wonder. As Newton walked about on its... As Newton walked about on it, his attention was drawn away from his new creation to see an object out in the distance, several miles away. Newton flew off his pyramid and suddenly became shocked and astounded to see a gigantic mountain in the shape of a pyramid. There was a pyramid on Mars after all. A huge Everest-sized pyramid. Newton was shocked and astounded that a mountain. Newton was shocked and astounded that something as strange and huge like this on Mars was never mentioned in his time. The thing was massive and old. It took Newton a few minutes to fly to it, and with his mind power he was traveling at about 5,000 miles per hour. Newton was shocked that he didn't create a sonic boom traveling at this at that speed. After an hour walking on the after an hour of walking on the uh, uh, real Martian pyramid, Newton called his ship to scan and analyze the structure. His crew did and discovered that it was indeed an ancient Martian pyramid, something that was built by an intelligent civilization millions of years ago. His excited crew wanted to beam down and check it out also, but Newton was a little superstitious and told them to stay be aboard. Mutania just... Mutania, just in case it would... Uh, to stay aboard Mutania, just in case it was something demonic or hostile. Newton found an entrance to the pyramid and began to descend down some gigantic 20-foot high, high stairs. Newton told his crew on his communicator that the Martians who built the pyramid must have been around 300 feet tall. Newton flew up off the steps and began to fly down the dark hallway to see what happened, see where it went to. So creepy and dark was the ancient Martian hallway that Newton took out his phaser and pulled out a flashlight from his pants pocket. 
the hallway descended down into a, gi a giant, gigantic room, then went down a curving, winding hallway. Newton didn't know what to expect. There was nothing in the room he was last in. Newton then realized that he was down around one mile below the surface of Mars. Finally, Newton came to a gigantic table with the rings laying on it. Newton shined his light on the on the image of wall. On the Newton shined his light on the huge red old ancient walls and found hier hieroglyphics hieroglyphic hieroglyphics that looked Egyptian. Newton couldn't read them, but they showed Egyptian uh, looking people spinning the rings on the table. Newton picked up a huge ring that was ten feet across in diameter and spun it and spun that one on the dusty table. Suddenly a bright, intense beam of light shot down from the ceiling of the room and shined down on the table Newton was on. To Newton's excitement, he saw a well, saw a wall without hydroglyphics slide up. It looked like a gigantic Egyptian on an old TV screen talking. When the ring quit spinning, the image of the wall faded away. Newton was now very excited. He tried spinning the ring again, but since he wasn't a 300 foot tall Martian. He went outside the pyramid and asked for his crew to beam the size change ray down at him. Mutania did and increased Newton's height to about 200 feet. Newton also had them bring down a universal translator to see if it could translate the projected ancient Martian into English. After making the universal translator late after making the universal translator to the size of a house Newton then spun the huge ring with ease and turned on the translator the image of the ancient Martian appeared again the Martian began speaking a mixture of ancient Egyptian Mayan and Hebrew it said in a deep male voice to those who might to those who might still exist. Warning. Leave this planet. Escape the curse of it. There is a curse on it. Leave this planet. There is a curse on it. I am the last survivor on the Mar on the Mars. I'm the last survivor of Mars. All that was is now perishing. Leave this place, or you my, or you may fall prey to the monstrous Ingus. The ring quit rotating. Huh, thought Newton. Can't I ever discover something that reveals good news? Newton picked up another ring and spun that one. The same Martian appeared, looking more concerned. The strange thing, the strange thing about him was that the Martian looked different. Its right arm was missing. It also was missing an ear. The Martian said, All city structures on, this, on the face of this planet have vanished from the touch of the Ingus. It just attacked me at sunrise. I doubt that I'll be totally here by next week. Please leave before the curse of the Ingus de descends upon you. Curse of Ingus, thought wondered Newton. Does Ingus still exist? Newton took another ring and spun that one on the table. It showed the Martian reciting poetry he made that, that re reciting poetry he had made. It went like the sky is so red, the ground is so red, the rocks are so red. I think I'll go out of my head. <laughs> Newton then spun Newton then spun the same ring the other way just for fun all our canals have turned to canyons our cities are desolate our streets are bare and I 
and I'm the only one left who has survived Ingus's stare. Huh, this Ingus must be a real devil, thought Newton. Newton then looked at his fingers. He noticed that his fingers were beginning to turn red. As some, for, for some strange reason. Newton wiped his fingers on his clothes, but they stayed red. Can't be blood, thought Noon. It can't be the rings either, because they are actually a blue, or they're actually blue in color. Newton wa then walked away from the giant table, causing the light from the ceiling to shut off. Newton was curious to find out how the beam of light was produced, but he realized that he must be back, he must go back to Earth to stop the Black Mutant. Later on, Newton's crew beamed down to see the mysterious ancient Martian pyramid also. It was then that trouble began, because the curse of Ingus still existed. Ingus was an ancient Martian demon that caused the old inhabitants of Mars to have a nuclear war. The war took place thousands of years ago, and caused Mars to become the dead, lifeless planet that it, was, that it, that it is now. Due to the sailing of the Martians crew due to the failing of the Martians crew to heed the ancient Martian warning oh due to the failing of the of the Mutania crew to heed the ancient Martian warning the demonic Martian spirit entered Captain Laser the 12 foot tall giant engineer Mutania Laser became insane with the demon and tried to seal and tried to seal Newton and his crew up in the pyramid, then used Mutania as a weapon to destroy Earth. But Newton got free from the pyramid and had a violent fight with Captain Laser on board Mutania. The demon wouldn't leave Laser and Newton ended up stranding Laser on Mars. But he left Laser on the planet with enough food and supplies to last him thirty years. Newton felt that it would be enough time for them to find out, to find out, to find and destroy the Black Mutant. One thing was for sure, Laser wasn't, this, wasn't that sorry because Mars was his home back in his time. This next story I'm about to read to you is called, In This Corner, The Black Mutant. In orbit around Earth, the Black Mutant was getting antsy. He was watching cable TV, MTV, and the news. The mutant was getting restless. He wanted to do something big, something fantastic, yet he didn't want to change time. The black mutant was also very confused because he was watching Star Trek episodes that were showing his original time in space. Did we have a show called Star Trek way back in the 1990s? He asked his crew. Yes, powerful, mighty one. Uh, said the robot at the sensors. The show was called Star Trek, and it starred William Will Turner and Leo Silverfeather as Captain James T. Scott and Mr. Talek Tillock, the alien first officer. This is most confusing, the mutant said, looking angry due to the contradictions in history. Don't we have a Captain Kirk of the USS Enterprise in our time? Yes, mighty powerful, fantastic, fantastically, and feared one, said another robot. The Black Mutant then screamed violently, Then why in my name are we seeing a dramatic, dramatized version of Captain Kirk in this